This is Lorne Green. It was not unusual in the Old West for there to be many womanless homes. The life of a settler was hard, too hard for some, and many women died young, particularly during the rigors of childbirth. Emma Jenner was one such woman who died giving birth to her first and only child, Jimmy. But her husband, Edward Jenner, bravely stayed on at their small farm just outside Cascade, Wyoming, and raised the boy Jimmy by himself. He tilled the land, raised wheat and corn, and put salt pork away for the long, cold winter. He also watched his son grow gradually into a man of 19 years. Jimmy, take some of these logs into the house. Sure, Pa. Uh, here over there, son, a little to your left. I got him. Yeah, a couple more right in front of you. Thanks, Pa. It's not easy raising a boy by yourself, especially a boy like Jimmy. You see, Jimmy Jenner is blind. And that's only the beginning of our story. Mutual Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis's production of the Mutual Radio Theater. Our story, The Blind Gun by John Vornholt. Our stars, Corey Burton and Vic Perrin. <laughs> On any farm, there is a division of labor, as no one person could possibly do all the work himself. The Jenner farm was no different, and certain chores gradually fell upon Jimmy, despite his blindness. One of these chores was the nightly cooking. Yeah, that was real good, Jimmy, and real filling. It was only stew. Still, you're becoming quite a cook. No, no, you stay put, son. I'll clear the table. The least I can do for such a fine meal. Was it a pretty sunset tonight? Passable. I heard a saying in town the other day. Red sky at night, clear to daylight. Red sky at morning, better take warning. Is that true? Not that I've ever seen. Seems like the sky is always red at night. What, what does red look like? What does red look like? Well... You know last week when you burned your hand on the stove? Uh, Remember how that felt? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what red looks like. <laughs> I can see how that saying got started. Uh, pa, how'd you hurt your leg? How'd you know I hurt my leg? Because you've been walking funny all day. I can tell the difference, you know. Huh? Might as well tell you, though, I'm, I'm not proud of it. I, I got myself into a little scrap at the fife and drum this morning. I guess I jerked something in my leg. Uh. Anyhow, that stupid bully Gus Keeler was picking on poor old Lucius Michaels again. I told him to stop. He wouldn't, so I made him stop. And lucky for me, I can still handle a bum like Gus Keeler when I have to. You shouldn't fight, Pa. I shouldn't go into that mangy rat hole for a drink. From now on, when I go into town, I'm just going to get my supplies and get out. I'd like to go to a saloon sometime. <laughs> what on earth for? So so you can get into a fight, too? No, just to see what it's like, to feel the atmosphere. Uh, are the saloon girls pretty? Yo, you're all fat and ugly. All of them? Now, look, are, are we going to gab about saloon girls all night? What do you want me to read to you? But my ma was pretty, wasn't she? Pretty? <laughs> Your ma was beautiful. She wasn't anything like a saloon girl. She was, she was small, real tiny, with skin so white and pure felt like the petal of a flower and, and her hair. Blonde, the lightest, creamiest blonde there ever was. Pa? Yes, son. Why don't you read me something? Yeah, what did you like to hear? Euripides, Shakespeare, Dickens, or something from the Bible? You know, all these books I read to you from were your mother's. She made me promise before you were born that I'd see to it you got a good education and became an avid reader. That's something else I regret, because you sure got the mind for it. I don't mind not reading, as long as I have you to read to me. Good, son. So what'll it be? How about a story by Bret Hart? I uh, don't think we better start anything right now, Pa. We're going to have company in a few minutes. What? 
Sounds like just one horse. And he's got to be headed here because there's nobody else out this way. Sometimes I think I'd trade one of my eyes for one of your ears. <laughs> and I'd take you up on it. <laughs> well, I'd better go on out and see who it is. Probably some peddler lost his way on his way to Cheyenne. <laughs> Who is it, Pa? Can't see his face, but he's headed this way. Now I'll go on out and meet him. It's you. Yeah, it's me, Gus Keeler. Who'd you expect? Pa, you all right? Yeah, Jimmy, I'm all right. You just go on back in the house. That's your blind young'un? I heard about him. Seems like tragedy runs in your family, Jenner. You have no quarrel with him. But I do with you. You embarrassed me today, Jenner. Embarrassed me real bad. You got the best of me in front of my friends. Friends? Those people aren't friends of yours. They're scared of you, that's all. That's the way I like my friends to be. That's why we can't have no more of what happened today. Fetch me my rifle, Jimmy. Yeah. Don't you move, blind boy. You hear me? I'm blind, not deaf. Leave him alone, Keeler. Just leave him alone. I intend to. I don't think I have much to fear from some stupid blind boy. But you, Edward Jenner, you're a different story. You stay away from me, and I promise I'll stay away from you. Oh, you'll stay away from me, all right, permanently. Pa, what's he doing? You stay put, young'un. Maybe he'll live. But not you, Edward Jenner. If you're a religious man, you better say a prayer. A prayer? You know, something from the Bible, like a psalm. What's that one about... Walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I was like that one. Twenty-third song. Say it. You can't really mean it. Say it! The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. No. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Pa! Pa! Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. No, Pa! No! No! I'll make you pay, Gus Keeler. I swear I'll make you pay! Jimmy picked up his father's lifeless body and carried it the entire six miles into the town of Cascade. No one asked Jimmy how he found his way. No one even asked him how long it had taken him. But there were enough questions to warrant a hearing into the death of Edward Jenner, presided over by Judge Harcourt. You may continue, Marshal. After Jimmy brought the body into town, how did he come to your attention? I was getting to that, Judge. Somebody found him, uh... Tell him a goody, I think it was, and brought him to my office. The boy says to me, very calm, that Gus Keeler rode out for their place and shot his father dead in cold blood. That sounded sort of sensible to me, since the two of them had been in a fight that morning. Objection. Opinion of the witness. Objection sustained. Just try to tell the story, Homer, without embellishing it too much. All right. But I did do some investigating. I asked Jimmy, how do you know it was Gus Keeler, since you're, uh, blind? He said he knew his voice, and that sounded okay to me. So I arrested Gus Keeler. Did Keeler resist arrest at all? No, he came along right peaceably. Sort of surprised me. Objection. Sustained. Did Gus Keeler at any time ever admit to the killing? No, Your Honor. He said right from the beginning that he was innocent. Okay, Marshal, you can step down. I'd now like to call to the stand Jimmy Jenner. Jimmy? Yes, sir. Now, tell us in your own words exactly what happened. Well, Pa and me had just finished supper. We were sitting around talking, like always. We heard a horse coming up. I heard him first. And Pa went outside to see who it was. 
He didn't even take a gun out there with him like most people would have. Pa trusted everybody. He didn't ever expect anybody would do him any harm. Pa was a good man. Anyhow, it was Gus Keeler who rode up. I've heard his voice several times when I've been in town, hanging around outside the saloon. I came out of the house to see what was going on, and my Pa and Gus Keeler were talking about the fight they'd had that morning. Pa wanted to let bygones be bygones, but Gus Keeler didn't see it that way. He said he had to keep Pa out of his way permanently. Pa told me to fetch his rifle, and that's when Gus Keeler drew his gun. Well, now, now, how do you know that, Jimmy? I heard him cock it. He told me to stand still, then he told Pa to say a prayer. When Pa didn't say anything, Keeler ordered him to say the 23rd Psalm. You know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But before Pa could even finish it, Gus Keeler shot him dead. Order! 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 Uh, was your father armed, Jimmy? No, sir, he wasn't. That's all the questions I have. Uh, would the defense attorney like to cross-examine? I certainly would, Your Honor. Uh, Jimmy, how do you know your father wasn't armed? Well, he... He never carried a gun. How do you know that? I I know my father. But you can't say for sure that he wasn't armed. You didn't see him walk out. Can you say with positive certainty that your father was not armed? No, I suppose not. Jimmy, who fired first? First? What do you mean? Well, you just said you weren't sure whether your father was armed or not, so it is possible that he fired first. No, he didn't have a gun. He couldn't have fired at anyone. Now you say he wasn't armed again. A minute ago you didn't know, Jimmy. Your testimony is very confused. <laughs> now, no need to badger the witness, Mr. Poole. This is only a hearing. Simply ask him straightforward questions. Yes, Your Honor. Jimmy, you heard a shot. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Did you see who fired it? Mr. Poole, I don't see. Did you see who fired it, yes or no? Well, no. All you know for sure is that you heard a shot. You don't know where it came from. As far as you know, your father could have shot himself. Shot himself? He did not shoot himself. Order? Order. Let's, uh, let's face facts, Jimmy. You can't be sure of anything. You heard a shot and your father's dead. That's all you really know. Anything else is just your imagination. No more questions. It was him. It was Gus Keeler. State your name. Gus Keeler. Did you know Edward Jenner? Slightly. Were you at Edward Jenner's house the night he was killed? No. Did you know his son, Jimmy Jenner? Never, madam. He says he knew you. I don't know how. How do you feel about Edward Jenner's death? Well, I didn't know him very well, but I'm real sorry. Seemed like a good man. <laughs> he was a good man in a fight. Did you kill Edward Jenner? No. Liar. He's a liar. It was him. It was. Order. 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 Now sit down, Jimmy. It won't do you any good. Do you have any more questions, Mr. Poole? No, Your Honor. Then the witness is retired. I've made a very difficult decision. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I can't in good conscience send this case to a jury for trial. There just isn't enough evidence. I know you believe what you've said at this hearing, Jimmy, but with no other witnesses, it's just your word against his. And the word of a blind man is, well, just not worth as much as the word of a man who can see. Case dismissed. You was cheated, son. Who are you? Lucius Michaels. I was the one your pa stood up for when he got into that fight with Gus Keeler. I'm the one that got him killed. No, sir. Pa would have helped anybody in the same spot. He was always helping people who needed help. I guess that's because he was used to having me around. Still, I'm powerful sorry. Your pa was one of the best men I ever knew. My pa told me a, a little bit about you, Lucius. Weren't you once a gunfighter? Well, some say the best in the territory. Of course, that was a long time ago when there were a lot of mining towns. I was once marshal of six towns at the same time. What are you doing now? Uh, cleaning saloons for drinks and tips. Do you ever shoot anymore? Shoot? My hand shakes so bad I can hardly hold a gun, let alone shoot one. I like to think it was age that done me in, but I know it was drink. Still, when it comes to... to, to 
Lucius, what's the matter? Why don't you go home, Lucius? Quit bothering the blind boy. Can't you see he's grieving? Well, yes, sir, Mr. Keeler. No, Lucius, you don't have to go anywhere. Mr. Keeler's the one who's leaving. Oh, I am, huh? Haven't you learned your lesson, blind boy? Keeler, you won today, but this fight is far from over. I'm going to hound you till the day you die. <laughs> Did you hear that? The blind boy's gonna hound me till the day I die. He probably hit me with his cane. <laughs> See ya, blind boy. You and that old drunk belong together. Yeah, I wish I had my nerves back for just ten seconds. I'd have that jackass laughing out of a hole in his ribs. You, you still know a lot about guns, don't you, Lucius? Huh? As much as there is to know. And you could still teach someone how to shoot and to draw? Oh, I taught many a man how to shoot. I taught Tom Horn when he was just a boy. Somebody's got to rid the world of Gus Keeler. I said I could teach. I didn't say I could do it anymore. You got to be young, have quick reflexes. After all, half a fast drawn is instinct. There's no way I could go up against Gus Keeler. I don't want you to. I want you to teach me to shoot. I want to learn enough to kill Gus Keeler myself. It's not every day an ex-gunfighter is asked to teach a blind man how to shoot and fast draw. But Jimmy Jenner was not an ordinary blind man. He was determined to avenge his father's death in the street, if need be, having been denied justice elsewhere. Uh, let me get this straight, son. You want me to teach you how to shoot? That's right. I don't care how long it takes. Uh, Jimmy, you're a nice fellow and all that, but uh, I don't know if it's possible to teach a blind man how to shoot. Well, you said yourself that fast draw is mostly instinct. And when you draw on someone, do you really have time to aim? No, but you got to know the general direction the person is standing in. I know where you're standing. About a foot to my left and no more than three feet away. You're also not very tall, about a foot shorter than I am. How did you know that? The direction your voice is coming from. Mm. You forget, Lucius... Blind people have better hearing than people who can see. I can recognize people by their footsteps, and I can tell if they're behind me, in front of me, or, or to the side. And it's true what they say about blind people having extra senses. Well, I'm not saying it wouldn't take a lot of extra work to teach me to shoot, but I can practice at night, which is one advantage. You make a good case, Jimmy, but I don't know. Didn't you ever have a shootout in the dark? Of course I did. Well, how'd you know where the other man was? Well, instinct, experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, I suppose it's possible you could learn a little. But you ain't gonna learn enough to go up against Gus Keeler. He, he's a pretty fair shot when he ain't drunk. Well, maybe I will. And maybe I won't. But I aim to try. And if you don't teach me, Lucius, I'll find somebody else who will. I'm prepared to pay. No, no, now don't do that. Some other jackass will just take your money. You're awful young anyway. H how old are you? Nineteen. Hmm. That's old enough to avenge my father's death. Lucius, if somebody killed your father, wouldn't you want to even the score? Son, that's how I became a gunfighter. Then you'll do it. Uh, it would be something, teaching a blind man how to shoot. Against my better judgment, I might give it a try, but there are two conditions. Uh, One, we give it a couple of weeks, and if it ain't working, you got to promise to forget all about it. And two, no pay. Agreed. But if I don't pay you, you got to let me give you something. I know. How about if you moved in with me at the house, eat and sleep there? That way you could work on me day and night. All right. But I got a feeling you was planning that all along. Hi, Lucius. How are things in town? Oh, fine. And I got a little something for you. You got it? Oh, let me hold it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Guns are like people. Each one's a little different, and each one's got a story. I'll have to tell you a little bit about this one before I give it to you. It's used, been around a few years, but that's all right. It's a Colt forty-five standard single action. Somebody sawed off the barrel a little bit and greased the action, so I know it's seen the inside of a holster before. It's 
It's got a cheap wood butt, but that's all right. I always liked wood better than pearl. Pearls are might too slippery. The trigger. Trigger's good and easy. Let me have it, Lucius. All right. Here. My. It's heavy. Is it loaded? <laughs> it ain't. <laughs> I can't get over how heavy it is. Believe me, it'll be light as a feather in no time. In fact, that gun has just become part of your body. You're going to eat with it, sleep with it, do your chores with it. You're going to feel naked without that gun. Can I cock it? Yep. And you can pull the trigger, too. I left the shell casings in, because it's not good for the hammer to strike nothing but air. Okay, Jimmy, let's try this. I'm just going to walk around you and clap my hands. When I clap my hands, you point the gun in my direction and you fire. I want to see how good you really are at telling direction. Ready? Ready. Okay. How'd I do? Well, you killed me twice, wounded me twice, and missed me altogether twice. Can we do it again? Jimmy, we're gonna keep doing it till you kill me all six times. And remember that number, six, because that's how many shots you got. No more, no less. Let's try it again. Ready? You haven't told me what you're thinking. About what? About me. It's been two weeks. Am I going to make it? What I was really thinking about was a drink. Lord, I miss that saloon, even with Gus Keeler in it. I need to know, Lucius. Is there any point in you staying on? Jimmy, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own two eyes. If you'll forgive me pointing out that difference. I think tomorrow it's time to get the bullets out of the cupboard. Yes, sir! Just... One thing bothers me. What's that? Well, you might get pretty good with a gun, especially at fast draw. But what good'll it do you? Gus Keeler's still going to kill you. And if he kills you, I'm going to have to kill him. I just don't know if I'm up to it. No, Lucius. Whatever happens between Gus Keeler and me is the end of it. I'm making that part of the deal right now. I've grown mighty fond of you, boy. You're a trier. A real trier. I bet your pa was proud of you. There's one more thing I've been thinking about. And when it's over between Gus Keeler and me, whatever happens, I want you to know that you can stay on here at the farm. <laughs> you might even like it once you get used to it. Oh, I like it already. But I think it's time to turn in. We got a busy day ahead of us, what with live ammunition and all. <laughs> tin can set up along the fence by the chicken coop. You know where that is. I got a string attached to each can and when I shake it, I want you to shoot. I got the can spaced two feet apart. When do I get to use the holster? In due time. You gotta learn how to shoot first. Now, I'm gonna rattle a can. Ready? Ready. I got one. But you missed three. You got two left. Try it again. Hey, son. What say we knock off? It's getting pretty dark. Well, that doesn't bother me. Uh, you go in if you want to. I'll, I'll stay out here and practice. By yourself? Sure. I'll walk up to the fence, touch the can, and take ten paces back. It'll help me to judge distances better. Hmm. Well, I suppose so. Okay, son. See you inside. Lucius? Yeah? Tomorrow I want to practice the draw. Why not? Lucius, what's the matter? Nothing. See you later.
Now, when you fast draw, every part of your hand is doing something. Mm -hmm. Your trigger finger's squeezing the trigger, your thumb is pulling back the hammer, and the rest of your fingers are lifting the gun out of the holster. It's all one smooth motion. Remember, it's the hammer that actually fires the bullet. Mm -hmm. The trigger don't do nothing but free the hammer. That's why you pull the trigger first. Pull the trigger first? Yep. And that way, by the time the gun's cleared the holster, all you have to do to fire it is to lift your thumb off the hammer. That is, providing you've pulled the hammer back. Of course, some people fan the hammer, but I don't hold with that. Why waste four or five shots when one good one will do? What happens if I let go of the hammer too soon? You shoot your foot off. Want some more coffee, Lucius? No, thanks. I'm going to have another cup, and I'm going back outside to practice. What for? By now, you're damn near as fast as any man who ever lived. Did you really mean it? Damn near as accurate as a man who can see, at least on a quick draw. It's all thanks to you. Now, don't say that, boy. I feel bad enough already. Bad? How many men are there who could train a blind man to shoot? That's just it. You're the only blind man in the world who can shoot. No matter what happens between you and Gus Keeler now, you're going to become famous. Even if you live, even if he don't even fight you, you're going to be the most famous gunfighter since Billy the Kid. Don't worry. Nobody's going to know about this except you and me. You ain't going to go up against Gus Keeler? Oh, I'll go up against him. He's still the man who killed my father in cold blood. But when I do, nobody's going to know who I am. <laughs> Lorne Green again, and here's the fourth act of The Blind Gun. Now, let me get this straight, Jimmy. Gus Keeler ain't gonna know who you are. He ain't the one that's blind, you know. I have a little plan. As I see it, I got two main problems going up against Gus Keeler. One, he probably won't draw on me if he knows who I am. And two, he's got to make a sound every second or I won't know where he is. What I plan to do is put us both on equal footing... Lucius, uh, if you look in my pa's bookcase, you'll find an almanac. An almanac? What's that got to do with anything? Just find it. Okay, but I thought we were planning a gunfight, not planting corn. Okay, I got it. Now, look up the moon tables and find me a night with no moon. No moon. Yeah, that might help. Here we go. There's a new moon in three days. My pa had a black suit. He wore it at funerals and such, and he also had a black hat. You think you could go into town and get me a black shirt? Hell, I got a black shirt. Good. Then we got the whole outfit. Now all we need is some black paint and some soot. Black paint and soot? This is beginning to sound a mite weird. I'm hoping it will be. Uh, you'll have to help me, Lucius. I, I want to paint my belt buckle, my snaps or buttons, anything that's shiny, black. Uh, we'll even have to paint the gun black, I'm afraid. Oh, not so, not so. All you have to do is paint the butt and the hammer black. That's all it shows above the holster. You're beginning to get the idea, Lucius. Yeah, it's a smart idea. And you'll cover your face and hands with soot, is that it? Right. I'm even wearing patches over my eyes. Mm. I want to be damn near invisible. Okay, let's say every inch of you is covered in black and there's no moon. Still going to be lights on in town, if that's where you're going. Not if we wait till almost midnight. Gus Keeler stays up drinking that late, doesn't he? <laughs> Later. Most people will be in bed by then. I figure you can take care of what other odd lamp might be on. I suppose. But you got to get Keeler out of the saloon. And how will you keep him talking? <laughs> Leave that to me. I know exactly what he's going to say. <laughs> And, and so I said to him, pay up, Pedro, or I'm going to take those corsets out of that bag of yours and wrap them around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do then, Gus? You bought me a whole nother bottle. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that reminds me, it's your turn to buy the drinks, ain't it, Bo? Ah, but Gus, you know I ain't got no more money. How do I know it? Yes, I already bought three rounds. But oh, I'm thirsty. Let me see it. Well, look at that. A four-bit piece. <laughs> Barkeep! 
three whiskeys here. Gus, you tore up my pocket. Have that fat wife of yours, man. Bye, Chief! I'll buy you a drink, Bo. What you drinking? Uh, gin. No drink for me, Gus. I gotta be getting home. Well, I just ordered you a drink, you gotta stay. Well, I, I'm going to Cheyenne in the morning tonight. Fred, I said you gotta stay. Okay, Gus. Okay. Saloon, about 50 yards ahead of us to the right. I'll go see if Gus Keeler's there. He's there. I can hear his voice. From here? Don't worry, Lucius. If you're ever blind, you'll get good at that sort of thing, too. How does the street look? Oh, darker than the devil's armpit. Besides the saloon, there's only one other light on in the liver stable. I can get it easy. Speaking of the devil, you look like his spitting image in that getup. You think Keeler will recognize me? What's there to recognize? Every inch of you is black, including your eyes. Good. He'll see me the way I see him. You stay here while I get the lamp in the stable. Bartender? Yeah, Gus. You poured this one a little short. Well, they poured it like I poured all the others. That's what I mean. You afraid I'll get drunk and disorderly and wreck all the furniture? <laughs> You've done it before. And I'm liable to do it again if you don't pour me a decent price. Okay, Gus, just relax. <laughs> hey, you boys want more? Uh, no, no, I, I'm fine. None for me either. I, I gotta be getting home soon, Gus. Well, me too. And leave me to drink all alone? Now, that ain't very sociable. Friends should stick together. Here's to my friends, my true good friends. <laughs> okay, son. Uh, the street's dark as sin. I'll sneak into the saloon and get the lamps there when you call Keeler out. Everybody will be watching him. Thanks, Lucius, for everything. Son, if this don't work out... I want you to know it's been a powerful honor to know you. And it's been a powerful honor to be taught by the greatest gunfighter alive. Yeah. I'd almost forgotten I was anything great till I met you, Jimmy. Good luck. See you back at the farm. Yeah. Remember to shoot low, because you got a tendency to go high. Right. Gus Keeler... Gus Keeler! I think I heard somebody call you, Gus. Gus Keeler! Come out, Gus Keeler! Stop that damn piano! Gus Keeler! Come out, Gus Keeler! What for? To die! Die? What we'll see about that! <laughs> Damn, how come it's so dark out here? I can't see you. Come closer, then. Hey, the lamp in the saloon. It doesn't matter. You don't need light to die. That's twice you said I'm going to die. Who are you, anyway? Death. Death? Hey, what is this, some kind of joke? It's no joke, Gus Keeler. I am death himself. But I'm going to give you a sporting chance. A better chance than you gave any of the people you killed or injured. I'm going to let you draw against me. Hey, who are you, really? I, I can't see your face. I don't have a face. Oh. God almighty. You don't have a face. Do you know the 23rd Psalm, Gus Keeler? Well, yeah, yeah. I, then I, say it. But, but I, I... Say I, it! I, oh. Uh, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, uh, he... He maketh me to lie down in uh, green pastures. Say the whole psalm, then draw. He, he, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me uh, beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He, he... He leadeth uh, me in the paths of righteousness. Say it. He, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness... Uh, for his name's sake, uh, yea, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fare no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and uh, thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou uh, uh, anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall... Goodness and mercy. Oh. Is that you, Fred? Why is it so dark? Who shot Gus? Don't, 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 don't go after him, Marshal. He ain't human. Ain't human? I saw it with my own two eyes. Ask anybody here. Gus Keeler was so bad, death himself called him out and killed him in a gunfight. It can probably be said that nobody missed Gus Keeler very much. In fact... Cascade, Wyoming, was a perceptibly nicer place to live after his departure. Morning, Lucius. Morning, Jimmy. Morning, Fred. Hi, Fred. Where are you all going with that suitcase, Jimmy? Well, I'm going to Boston to study something called Braille. Braille? What's that? Oh, something some Frenchman invented to teach blind folks how to read. Well, how does it work? Well, if he knew that, he wouldn't be going. I think it's through touch instead of sight. Oh, well, who's going to take care of the farm? Well, I am, of course. You? Lucius Michaels? <laughs> well, what's so funny about that? Jimmy's taught me a lot about farming in exchange for something I taught him. Now, how long you been gone, Jimmy? Oh, two years. Two years? Hey, Lucius, did I tell you what happened to Gus Keeler? Damnedest thing ever happened in these parts. I heard, I heard. Look, Fred, I'd like to jawbone with you, but I gotta get Jimmy on that train. Oh, sure, sure. Have a good trip, Jimmy. Thank you. Oh, windbag. <laughs> You sure you won't mind living on the farm? Mind? Why, it's the most peace and quiet I've had in 30 years. Sure you won't mind living in Boston? Two years a long time. Being able to read is something my pa always wished for me. I think I ought to do it for him. Yes, son, I reckon so. Well, up you go. I'll miss you. I'll miss you, Lucius. But all right, somehow. I just bet you will. And you know, to this day, in Cascade, Wyoming, they talk about the night death himself called Gus Keeler out and killed him in a fair fight. Mutual Radio Theater is brought to you five nights a week at this time. Tonight's original radio play, The Blind Gun, was written by John Vornholt and produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Corey Burton and Vic Perrin. Featured in the cast were Marvin Miller, Tom Holland, Jack Carroll, Harley Bear, and Howard Culver. The Mutual Radio Theater theme was composed by Nelson Riddle. John Harlan speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Mutual Radio Theater is a presentation of CVI. This is Andy Griffith. Join us tomorrow at this same time. I've got another story I think you'll find riotously amusing. <laughs>